Hi Wildcats, it's me, Miss Garrett, and I'm back to read you a story that's called The Matchbox Diaries. This is about a great-grandfather telling his great-granddaughter about his diary, which he kept on his way to coming to the United States as a boy. Let's begin. Pick whatever you'd like the most, then I'll tell you a story. There are so many things here. You'll know when you see it, and then I'll know something about you, the great-granddaughter I've only heard about. So, you like boxes just like me? You smoke cigars? No, me either. There's no cigars in it anyway. What's inside? Not just one story, but lots. What's in the little boxes? My diary. What's a diary? A way to remember what happens to you. Usually it's a book people write in. When I was your age, I had a lot I wanted to remember, but I couldn't read or write, so I started this. Open the first one. What is it? An olive pit. I put it in my palm and I'm right back in Italy. That's where I grew up. Lots of olive trees there. Life was hard. The other reason I saved it. No floor in our house, just dirt. No heat in the winter except for the fire under the cooking pot. And sometimes not enough food. When I'd tell my mother I was hungry, she'd give me an olive pit to suck on. It helped. Who is this? My father. He went to America to work. He sent money home. Lots of Italian men did. I was a baby when he left. All I remember about him was his mustache. Once he sent pictures so we wouldn't forget him. My father never went to school. Back then, most kids had to help their parents all day. He had to get someone to write his letters home from America. When one came, we had a problem. Four older sisters, my mother and me, none of us could read. We had to take it to the schoolmaster. He had a son older than me. He could read and write. Every day, the boy wrote down what happened in a diary. Every year, he got a new one, red leather with a silk bookmarker. I had no idea how to write, but I was wild about having my own diary. I want one too. That's my girl. There was a year with no rain, no wheat, no macaroni. The schoolmaster wrote a letter to my father for us. We waited. A long time later, a letter came back with tickets to sail to America. When we left, my grandmother cried in the road. You'll eat the food there and forget your home over and over. We took a horse-drawn carriage to Naples. It was the first time I'd ever seen a car. Uh, and drinks and bottles, and the ocean. We slept three nights on the floor in a steamship station waiting for our boat. That's where I found our matchboxes. I told my grandmother I wouldn't forget her or anything else. That's when I started my diary. Our ship left. We were on the bottom where the motion was the worst. People seasick moaning. My sister took me up on the deck. You, uh, you like that hairpin. Uh, when I found it, I looked up, and high above us were rich ladies in big hats on the upper decks. People said that there was gold lying around the ground in America. I thought my mother and sister would look like those women soon. We were headed for Ellis Island in New York. Someone told me that men would stick button hooks in their eyes there. What's a button hook? A metal tool for closing up shoes before there were laces. I had nightmares about the button hook men. Then we had bigger problems. A storm hit us. Maybe a hurricane. The boat bucked like a horse. I saw a bunch of sailors praying together. Not good. St. Christopher is supposed to protect travelers. People threw medallions of him in the ocean, begging him to spare us. After three days, the waters calmed. How long did it take you to fly across the country? Five hours? That trip from Italy took 19 days. I know because I put sunflower seed shells in a box every morning. Then everyone was calling, La Statua della Libertà. I ran up to the deck. There was New York. A boat came up to ours selling food. Our neighbor on the ship 
bought bananas and gave my family one. I bit into it and spat it out. I didn't know you were supposed to peel it. How come this one's empty? I'll tell you why. We got off Ellis Island. They didn't want to let anybody sick, especially people with eye disease. All morning I'd been crying because of the button hook men. When I saw him, I screamed, and he grabbed me and used a handle to roll up my eyelid and look underneath. Red, he said. He can't come in. My mother fainted. My older sister found a doctor who spoke Italian and told him that my eyes were red from crying. She gave me a peppermint candy to calm me down. Later, a new doctor checked me using his fingers. Uh, that one let me pass, but the candy, I put the candy in my box. Then the next week, I ate it. My father met us. Everyone cried. I smelled his mustache to see if it was really him. We took a boat to New York, then a train somewhere else. The next day, we started to work in uh, canneries. All seven of us, cutting fish all day, always a man watching to make sure we weren't slowing down. They gave us old, falling-apart shed to live in, as crowded as the ship. Uh, you didn't have your own room? No, sweetheart. Canning fish, sorting peaches, selling peas. Then down to the south, peeling shrimp and opening oyster shells. Wherever there was work, we moved so often I could barely remember where I was or where I'd been. That's why I started saving bits of newspapers so that someday I could look back and say that I was in the exact place on that exact day. I still love newspapers. Instead of jewelry, my mother and sisters had fish scales on their arms. The strange thing was, uh, when we walked down the streets and maybe passed a grocery, the same people who bought our cans of sardines wouldn't look at us. Back then, people didn't want Italians here. Sometimes boys threw rocks. That's how my tooth got here. This is my favorite box, my first baseball game. I didn't understand it, why the men were running, but it was heaven not to be working and to sit with my father. Under the grandstands, I found more matchboxes. Then, in a clump of grass, a quarter. It meant that we could go again. To me, it seemed like one lump of gold people said we wouldn't find, or we would find. I think I was eight when we got an apartment, and I rolled cigars at the kitchen table. A few years later, we switched to shelling nuts for restaurants day and night. Then my father got hired at a foundry in Pittsburgh making railroad parts. My sister sewed in a factory. My mother told my father that I should go to school. She'd see me staring at signs and circus posters trying to understand. Sometimes I'd draw letters with pieces of coal. She wanted me to learn to teach my sisters. Big argument, days, weeks. Who won the argument? I'll give you a hint. I went to school. It was hard. English seemed as crazy as baseball. I had to sit with little kids. They made fun of how I talked, but I learned to read and write. What they taught us during the day, I taught my sisters at night. Then I went to a different school where I learned typesetting. Uh, picking out the letter, the lead letters from compartments. That's how everything was printed before computers. I had good eyes from always looking for little things for my matchboxes. I became a printer. Did you stop the matchbox diary? In a way, I never did. After 30 years of printing, I opened a bookshop. Books are like newspapers. They show where you've been. Then I bought and sold antiques, old things that people had saved for years, filled with stories, other people's diaries. I wish I could write a diary. Do you go to school yet? To kindergarten. Lucky girl, you'll be writing before you know it. Till then, I'll bet you're a good collector like me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I miss you a lot, and I hope to see you soon. Have a good day.